So here, you saw a screenshot of this a second ago. This is VForge, which is our level editor here. And on the bottom left here is actually the layers that I mentioned before. And this is what we use to make it so that it's easy to do multi-user editing. So this actually directly connects to Perforce. And I can right click on a particular layer and say lock. And then that actually does a Perforce checkout and lock so that other people can't edit this particular layer. And it still is important for you to organize this in a kind of understandable way. You want to have maybe a lights layer so that someone who's just doing lights can work on it. Maybe there's a nav generation layer, uh, maybe you have actors in one layer and so on. So you still need to separate it in a realistic way, but we provide the utilities to make that easy for you. So the coolest part for this is iteration time. And what I mentioned a second ago, you can actually play this game directly inside the editor. We'll actually show this on the device in a second as well. So this is exactly the same C++ code that would be running on your device as well. It's a C++ plugin that works directly inside of the editor. So it's not like you have to maintain two separate code bases, one that works in the editor and one that works on the device. They actually work in conjunction with each other. So this is actually showing off not just our AI system, but the particles that we have to offer. And if I actually let this guy, I'm just going to... So we also have a full particle system, and that guy actually blended into a ragdoll state as well. So this is showing everything from AI, Animation Studio, and our physics system all in one package. And again, this demo that you're seeing here, including all the source assets, the models, the animations, everything is included completely for free, and all the source code is included as well. So let me actually exit out of this and just quickly show you some of the things we can do. A second ago I mentioned the asset management system. Go ahead and exit that here. So this is the asset browser, which is one component of our asset management system. Let me actually make this thumbnail a little bit bigger here. And this is actually showing all the types, all the assets that are available to us inside this particular project. So you can see there's a lot of things here. And this separates into things like textures, static meshes, models, prefabs, and so on. And I can do individual filters on this just to see the things that I care about. Um, and prefabs, I kind of didn't mention this at all, prefabs are a way for you to combine different assets into one group. For example, you might have a torch, and a torch may have a light on it, a particle system, and a mesh. You can combine those things into a prefab and then instance that all over the place, which will save memory and time so an artist can create, this is my torch, and this is how I want it to look everywhere in the level. Makes it very easy. So actually, let me go ahead and show you how to create a level really quick here. So, let's say I want to drag and drop a created pillar inside the scene. It's really simple. I can search for a pillar, filter this out, then I can just drag and drop this into the scene. It actually snaps it to the ground as well, so I'll actually cast it down so that it fits onto whatever level surface that you have. So I can just do this really easily. And another thing that we, I want to show off here is being able to, the component-based thing that I mentioned before. So, let's, for example, let me go ahead and search for a boulder here. So let me drag and drop this guy in here. And we come over here, move this into a little bit better space here. I'm in the sky for no real good reason. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this in the editor. You see that it just hangs out in the sky. Well, what if I want this boulder to actually interact with this world that I have? Which seems like a logical thing I may want to do. So let me go ahead and select this folder. We have this components panel here. And these are all the different components, or you can consider them attributes or behaviors that you want, might want to attach onto a particular entity in the world. So in this case, I'm going to attach a Havoc rigid body to this. So I just double click on this. It creates a new component for this particular entity. And just like that, if I press play, that boulder now interacts with the world. And this, in the same way, you can attach different behaviors uh, through plugins to create your own behaviors. Maybe you want a behavior of a thing that just floats up and down or in a weird ethereal way. You can create a component to do that, attach it to the entity, and then it attaches a new kind of behavior or movement to, to your object. And you can layer these things on top of each other too. I just made this a habit rigid body. Maybe I want to attach a blob shadow to it. Maybe I want to add an LOD system to it. I can attach and layer these components on top of each other and it just works. So another feature that I really like that empowers designers is our linking system. So for example, um, right here, I have this character here, and this is a trigger volume here. Right now, if I switch over to the link editor here, I can create a link um, from on enter, which is this guy here. So when something enters it, I want something to happen. Well, if I click on this, an icon appears underneath this guy called the spawn event. So in the editor itself, I can link the on enter event to the spawn event. And now it will automatically, when the character enters this, this guy's spawn event is going to get triggered, and then he's going to be spawned below. 
So very, very easily you can start, a designer has a lot of power and can do almost everything you need directly from inside of here. And we also have a really good particle system. So I can show you really quickly here how to create something like a, we also have a full um, template selection here too. So we want to be able to show people the extent of the power here, but also give you something, a good place to start off with. So I'm going to select Magic Stardust because it looks amazing. And <laughs> drag and drop this guy into here. Up a little bit. And directly from in here, if I press play, you can see exactly what this part of the system looks like. But we also have full constraints um, and collision systems that you can attach to this particle. So I can come up here and we have different constraints. I'm actually going to pull in a sphere here. Um, go ahead and stop this. Select my sphere. Move this over into a more realistic area. So what I'm going to do here is actually connect these two together so that the particle system collides with this sphere here. I'm just get into a place where it actually collides. Alright, so that what I'm going to do is use that same connection editor and connect the, this system to this particle system. And now, when I switch over to the particle system and play this, and select this so I can move it around, you'll see that the particles actually now interact with the sphere. So that's just showing you two basic ways. Spawning using the connection editor, using trigger volume events, or connecting things together like a constraint system with the sphere and the particle system. Go ahead and show that set transformation. Sure. So I'll switch over to another scene that we have here, which is our block tower demo. Let me just switch over and play the game here real quick. So this is another sample that we provide, and I actually mentioned this a while ago. This entire sample was made with Lua. So I can, inside the editor, drag this around. It's basically a Django-style block target. And this was made entirely inside of Lua. So what I'm going to show you here, a second ago I showed you the asset browser. Another feature that we have is the asset transformation. And up here we have different profiles. So you can see we have a PC DirectX 9, an iOS, and an Android profile. And then right here, I can actually preview that directly. So what I'm going to do is change this texture here, this anarchy texture, by coming over to my library and selecting block tower, double clicking on this block TGA file. Um, and what I'm going to do is, you'll notice here we have transformations. And right now, the template is set to custom, but I can also set it to compress no alpha or to <coughs> use uncompressed textures for this particular texture. Maybe it's a skybox, and I always want it to be uncompressed. So what I'm going to do is select custom, and go down to Android, and for just Android, you notice this is very crisp right now. For Android, for whatever reason, I'm going to say downscale this by a power of three. And then I'll say update transformation, and that actually transforms it for me. And then if I switch over to Android, and then preview this, you'll see that the resolution for just this particular texture is a lot lower. And that's not all we have available to us. Um, I showed you a second ago we had PC DirectX 9, Android, and uh, iOS, all of these can be set in the Asset Profile Manager. So we can create a new one. Maybe we want to create a profile that's iOS ugly or something like that. It's very easy to come in and create new profiles, create new templates for new devices. Maybe I should create a Tyson profile, for example. So, yeah. And real quick, just to show this actually working on a Tyson device, we have our demo. Uh, we've been showing it on the show floor. I'm sure many of you have seen our pods. I highly recommend if you've not yet to go check it out. Um, we also have some rendering demos. Again, all completely running on the Tyson device. So next, we're going to show you uh, Project Anarchy and some of the tools used. Now, it's going to go through some demos. All these demos are going to be available on download with the SDK.
last thing to add there I don't think we covered is we're actually going to make the uh, SDK available to download mid-June. So 